This is The Top, where I interview entrepreneurs who are number one or number two in their industry in terms of revenue or customer base. You'll learn how much revenue they're making, what their marketing funnel looks like, and how many customers they have. I'm now at $20,000 per talk. Five and six million. He is hell-bent on global domination. We just broke our 100,000 unit soul mark. And I'm your host, Nathan Latka. This is episode 686. Tomorrow morning, we talk to Jeremy. Monaco bored the heck out of him. He was living the life out there on a beautiful island. Now he places ads on digital billboards and makes a lot of money doing it with his company, Vistar Media. So how's he doing it? Good morning, everybody. My guest this morning is Danny Golan, who oversees strategy and the go-to-market and overall company operations at a company called Cominario. Previously, Danny served as president and general manager of Performix Technologies, which was acquired by Nice Systems in 2006. Prior to Performix, he served as an executive responsible for leading new ventures at EMC. He holds a BSc in electrical engineering, summa cum laude, from the Technion Institute of Technology and an MBA from the Kellogg School of Management, Northwestern University. Prior to his professional career, Danny served as a fighter pilot and an officer in the Israeli Air Force, which means I can't mess with him too much. Danny, are you ready to take us to the top? Absolutely. <laughs> Pleasure to be here. Hey, you're a tough guy. Air Force and the startups, huh? <laughs> they're, they're very similar, actually. Wow. Uh, a lot of similarity between uh, get the job done, be very focused, uh, always have plan B, C, D, and, and so on. Uh, and think outside the box. So tell us what Caminario does and how, what's your business model? How do you make money? Uh, absolutely. Uh, so uh, exciting times uh, for uh, Caminario. Essentially, we, we are uh, the infrastructure for the cloud. Um, as, as we all know, we live in a world where uh, around us we have data explosion. And that data um, need to be uh, stored, accessed completely different from um, how we used to uh, manage data just a few years back. Just, just think about your uh, personal life, uh, your social media you know, of choice, uh, the amount of data that, that we're handling today. Just, you know, three, four, five years ago, it's dramatically different. The same way happen to uh, enterprises and next generation enterprises uh, that are just uh, handling uh, much more data. So you're helping bring efficiency to data sets and databases and data centers. Is that accurate? Yeah. So, so Cominaria essentially de developed the next generation uh, data storage uh, infrastructure. Uh, so we provide uh, our customers that are really uh, most of them uh, next generation uh, business models. So most of our customers are uh, software as a service uh, companies, new uh, application models, and they need a completely different uh, infrastructure uh, that can grow with them. So all of our customers grow dramatically uh, fast uh, faster than um, uh, legacy enterprises. Uh, they, uh, they generate dramatically more data. And, uh, and they need um, the storage infrastructure to grow with them, to scale, and, and to do all of that in a far radically simpler way and more cost-efficient way uh, than in the past. And this is not a cheap business to build. How much capital have you raised? Yes, so, uh, so we raised uh, to date $218 million dollars. Uh, including the uh, latest round of uh, uh, $75 million, uh, uh, significantly oversubscribed round that we, uh, we've announced uh, in January uh, and obviously completed it uh, throughout two th uh, 2016. And the interesting point is that uh, although the, the markets were tough in 2016, um, uh, the worst uh, year since 2002 uh, in terms of IPOs, um, and also uh, private placement. And I think that the fact uh, that, that we are dealing in, in two of the hottest uh, markets uh, in, in IT, uh, one is the cloud and two is Flash. So Flash really created the, the opportunity to, uh, to, to, to be in the middle of the biggest revolution um, in, in, in IT, uh, and and uh, be as flexible as our customers' uh, uh, needs. 
Now, Danny, that was a $75 million round Series F. I don't know typically how much, what portion of, uh, of, com- of you know, percentage-wise on the cap table people are usually giving up in a Series F, but have you guys passed the magic billion-dollar valuation mark, or how close are you? So uh, that's a great question. I always said uh, Would you like that-, that question, by the way? I hate it because it makes it seem like valuation <laughs> is the only thing that matters, but I know my audience loves it. <laughs> uh, so I'll, I'll, I'll surprise you. Um, um, I, I think, and, and pardon my French bullshit, uh, <laughs> it, it, it's, it's, so I'm, I'm with you. I Good. think that the chase uh, of valuation, um, uh, is, is the wrong chase. Yep. And, and the reason, the reason I say this is that if you're pushing your valuation for perfection, um, I can tell you, um, a little secret. There is no perfection in IT. Uh, there is always uh, um, a challenging a challenges in everything that we do, and you you want to make sure uh, that um, uh, that you uh, have a fair valuation um, for your company without pushing either uh, the investors or uh, your plans to unrealistic uh, uh, you know areas. And, and I can tell you that the sentiment of investors, uh, if they appreciated, um, you know, growth, growth, growth uh, in the past, today, uh, what is far more important, and we see it in the public um, market, they're asking for real businesses, especially when, when it comes to, uh, to um, uh, IT. Yep. Um, they want to see path uh, for profitability, and they want to see healthy business, um, uh, and 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 that's exactly where uh, where we were. And I think that the fact that the the round was significantly oversubscribed in a tough market really speaks a volume to our business model. The fact that we are uh, very close um, uh, uh, to profitability. The are you? Are you really? That, you're close um, to profitability with this much capital in the company. That's rare that you'd be this close. Yes, yes, yes. So, so uh, absolutely, this is uh, this is something that we're very proud of uh, and and really excited. Uh, the investors, um, uh, the new investors, all of our existing investors. Um, and participated. That's good. Many of them uh, increased uh, their their uh, their uh, their uh, share uh, significantly. So, Danny, don't don't give me a direct number, but let's let's go with the lesson you just articulated, which it's not always about getting the highest valuation because you can set unrealistic expectations. Maybe you never grow into the valuation, and then you're screwed. Um, so, give me give me your valuation in terms of a relative number, which is uh, maybe a multiple on your current ARR. Did you do something conservative like three x, or did you really aim for like a ten x or twelve x? Yes. So, so always uh, again, if if uh, come on, Danny, what's the it? number? Give it to me. Two x, three x, or more. So I'll tell you. So um, look at this um, smile. If you guys are watching the YouTube. I, I, I was- <laughs> <laughs> yes, I was, I was, I was in much tougher uh, interrogations uh, uh, in the army. And you're and, good at this. So you're very not... good at this. I have a tough job today. Yes, you, you have. I can, I can tell you uh, uh, that I've never uh, dealt uh, or uh, put valuations uh, out there uh, as a goal or, or or as a pride. But I can tell you, and this is to anyone that is. Uh, an entrepreneur is opening a, a new uh, a company soon. Uh, is that uh, really what you need to focus? Is protecting uh, the employees, protecting uh, all the common, to make sure. Um, and I'll give you an example. Many uh, cases in the past that I've seen uh, people, uh, in order to inflate the valuation, were willing to give crazy terms uh, to the investors. And Danny, be specific uh, there, though. Are we talking 3X liquidation preferences, ratchet clauses? Tell me specifically one or two terms you mean. Exactly. So when when um, when you're promising uh, multipliers, when you're promising ratchet... Well, Danny, and sh- share my... My audience doesn't know what that means. When, when you say uh, promising a multiplier, what does that mean? So uh, when, when you are uh, getting any money uh, into uh, into the company, let's say uh, a million dollar. Uh, a 3X means that first of all, you need to return 
three million back to the investors before you do anything else. Yep. Okay. So, so let's just let's break that down though, Danny, real quick, because that's a perfect example. So guys, if you're listening right now and you're thinking about or you've already raised a million dollars and you have a three X liquidation preference, that means let's say your company's only doing three hundred grand per month and you have a three million dollar exit offer. Now that might make you rich as a founder because you still own 60, 70% of the business, but you have to pay that $3 million, which is three X of the fund rate of the, of the round back to the investors first. So you get nothing. And that's what Danny means by the common or shareholders get wiped out, including your equities and your equity, uh, your, your, your employees in your equity pool. Yes. So, so uh, going back to your uh, question about evaluation, valuation is bullshit. If you have crazy terms um, and, and the terms mathematically, Simply uh, by math are far more important than the actual valuation. Yep. Uh, and, and the reason, um, so we are a late stage. We have raised a lot of money and, and, and uh, we're at scale. Uh, we're near profitability. When did you we launch, have, Danny? When did you launch the company? Uh, 2008. 2008. Actually, yeah. uh, actually, April's Fool's Day, 2008. We just, <laughs> well, it's not so much a joke anymore. You've raised a quarter of a billion dollars, right? Yes, yes. So, so I wasn't uh, willing as the founder to wait one more day. <laughs> and I said, either we are the biggest fools uh, around or um, we, we're on to, uh, to something. Later, by the way, later uh, we found that, that Apple was also found uh, founded in uh, on April's Fool's Day. So not a bad comp. We, yes, not a bad, not a bad comp. So take us back. You launched in 2014. Um, you mentioned, oh, no. kind of, oh, sorry, 28, 2008. Sorry, 2008. 2008. Yes. Yeah, you launched on April Fool's Day, 2008. My mistake. Um, you, you talked to us about what the company does. Fast forward to today. How many customers are you serving? We have thousands uh, of environments in production, uh, so uh, we're, we're that we're very very proud. But uh, another metric that I want to uh, uh, show is not just uh, the number of of environments that we're in in production, but also uh, how loyal the customers are. This is something that we're very uh, uh, proud of, uh, and the one metric that we're measuring is how fast a specific customer. Uh, is going to buy more. So on average, on average, a customer that that uh, uh, started with a, a typical configuration, let's say, um, you know, will translate it to dollars uh, to uh, three hundred thousand dollars. But Danny, the just, that, Danny, just to be clear though, that's a three hundred thousand dollar annual contract. That's a typical starting point. Uh, it, it's not an annual contract. It's a one time because we we do serve an appliance which is software, hardware, and service. So is this an on-prem? I mean, is there an on-prem installation here? No, 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 no. So, so when, when, we, when, when we say uh, we're the infrastructure of the cloud, cloud uh, uh, providers, either infrastructure as a service or most commonly private cloud, where a SaaS company uh, at a certain time, at a certain stage, understand that a private cloud uh -huh. or hosting is far more economical than uh, shared uh, infrastructure uh, of a public cloud. So we do both. We sell to the cloud providers or we sell to the SaaS companies uh, to their own private implementation. Is but, the SaaS aspect though, is that a much larger portion of your revenue or is it the other one? The so SaaS is by far the yeah. largest portion of our, so most of the SaaS companies um, and I'll give you numbers, right? By uh, 2019, the total cloud market uh, will be 175 billion. Mm -hmm. Out of that two thirds, okay, more than 120 billion is SaaS companies. Um, uh, Amazon last year was only $12 billion. So the portion of infrastructure as a service is only uh, 50 some billion dollars and Amazon uh, holds uh, um, 12 billion dollars out of it. So most of the, our market are SaaS companies that are building uh, their own uh, private cloud to serve um, and to serve their customers as some sort of a service. It could be financial, it could be e-commerce, it could be medical, whatever it is, 
um, uh, that they do, but they do run it on their own private cloud. And Danny, you said, though, I mean, the key to winning this market is going to be what you just articulated, right, which is how much do customers love you? And you can measure that in a number by net revenue expansion annually, right? So and I think that was a number you were building to earlier. So I want to come back to that. Can you first, though, give us the average, the SaaS sales, and that's the majority of your business, the average kind of monthly payment these companies are making you is what? And then tell us, tell us what you're proud of, which is net revenue expansion annually. Absolutely. So, so let's say that that uh, on average they start uh, with a one time uh, spent with us of three hundred thousand dollars. No, what's the SaaS though? Right, that's a. Di I think that's a different yeah. model. So, so no, so so just just to distinguish, right? Okay. We sell to a SaaS company. Okay, they charge their customers um, on a monthly uh, basis. Usually, they pay us as a one-time fee for our, uh, um, our uh, infrastructure. Or and there's no, there's no ongoing payments? There is a, an ongoing payment for maintenance, but uh, usually in 99% of the time, uh, they pay it up front for Got three it. years. Yeah. So I, I misunderstood you, Danny. When I yes. asked you, is the majority of your revenue SaaS? I didn't mean is the majority of your revenue coming from SaaS companies. I meant is your revenue uh -oh. stream coming from monthly recurring revenue? So we misunderstood each other there. So just to be clear, you're making most of your money because there's an average upfront cost from SaaS companies buying your technology yes. of 300 grand. Now tell me about the expansion revenue. Yes, and, and uh, very quickly, within 12 months, um, uh, the average uh, is uh, almost tripling. So, uh, uh, so if, if a SaaS company started $300,000, they will uh, go over a million by the end of 12 months. Um, uh, so uh, quite a rapid growth. Um, in, in, uh, in our experience, once they, they, they understand how drastically Caminario uh, appliance, uh, called K2, by the way, um, in their operation and how it changes how they do business, they grow very, very fast. Now, you said you, said you had a minimum of 300,000 environments, or sorry, 1,000, a minimum of 1,000, or you said in the thousands, so also a minimum of 1,000 environments spun up. If each of those environments were at a minimum 300 grand up front, I mean, there's 300 million bucks right there. Am I doing that math correctly? In other words, is an environment directly correlated to a, a new SaaS company customer? It, it's uh, a absolutely, um, um, you're, you're, yeah, you're absolutely right. You guys could tell this guy's a fighter pilot. He's been interrogated like hell. He's so well trained. I'm doing my freaking best. All right. So, so, so let me ask you a different question. Um, yeah. It sounds like you have pretty predictable expansion revenue. Um, what's your team size currently, and what portion of your team are inside salespeople? So, um, uh, overall, Caminario uh, is uh, 250 uh, people. Uh, the inside sales uh, uh, portion. Uh, is not large uh, because the inside sales role um, in Cominario is either to work because we are a channel company, so either to work with our channels or to set meetings to the channel and and some of our uh, feet on the street. So we have a presence in the market uh, that uh, when, when you sell an appliance, certainly storage, which is the heart. Uh, of any business, uh, you can't do it solely on the phone. You have to do it with a feet on the street, uh, with strong partners. Well, and, and your, your average selling price can fund that as well, right? I mean, you have plenty yeah. of costs to cover. Yeah. Yeah. My, my key, the question I was building to is, is what levers are your inside sales people using to drive that 3x expansion and, and lifetime value over the first 12 months? Is it new seats the company's adding? Is it just more data usage? What, why is it expanding so quick? Yes. So, um, so data grows on average um, in any company on earth. Doesn't matter the size, the vertical, uh, the geo, uh, at 100% year over year, 2x. So growing exponentially. When you look at just the SaaS segment, uh, it's growing much faster. Now, normally, uh, customers will not uh, move all the data uh, to you uh, day one. They need to gain trust. Uh, they need to understand uh, how you operate. And usually what we, uh, what we see is that they just fall in love uh, with the experience that is radically simpler um, uh, in, in how they manage their business. 
And this is when they're growing with us versus with other technologies. What's the metric, Joe, Joe Danny? Is it like, I'm making this up because I'm so out of my league talking about this. Is it like petabytes per hour process? Like what's the utility metric that's driving that 3X growth? Yeah, so, so usually there are two aspects. One capacity. So Measured in one unit. A, a, a petabyte, terabyte. Um, uh, uh, so, uh, so usually 300k uh, uh, will bring, it will give you um, around uh, a 400 to 500 a terabyte. And, and this and is getting cloudy for the audience, real quick. What is like a Salesforce to use? Like, give us, make it real. Like, what's a company that everybody knows processing on a monthly or weekly basis? Oh, it, it, it's it's uh, nobody really knows how <laughs> how much Salesforce or uh, but we're talking about uh, petabytes of hundreds of petabytes. What is that? Okay. Like if, if I'm sending a picture, how many pictures fit in one petabyte? Like make that number real for us. Oh, OK. So so first of all, um, you know, uh, we're the most scalable uh, product out there in the market. So our uh, um, our, our product, our minimum uh, product uh uh, can fit roughly 12 petabytes. So this equals to 400,000 iPhones. Perfect. That's a perfect <laughs> analogy. Great. That's very helpful. So last questions I've got here before we wrap up. Um, y you guys, it sounds like your revenue stream is not a predictable monthly one. There's not a subscription fee. Now, you do have predictability in your expansion revenue, it sounds like. So when you go out to get valued or, or you think about, again, raising capital or, or even just planning headcount and budget expenses, how do you get a good grasp of what future revenues look like when really to grow them, you have to go find new customers to pay that $300,000 setup fee? Yes. So, uh, so first of all, uh, once we have customers, uh, it depends on us to perform. And if we perform as we perform till now, and in our record, we never lost a customer, which shows uh, not just the, uh, the value of the technology, but the commitment of our people. Um, uh, uh, we're growing, so we're growing in every customer. So this is a big funnel, right? Every cu every customer that we acquire grows. So so just by uh, by doing that. A significant portion of our revenue stream comes from existing customers. More, Even more than new, there, more than the new. It, it, it's actually quite balanced. Okay, it's, so so in twenty seventeen, your revenue growth fifty percent is going to come from expansion, fifty percent will come from new signups. Yeah, that's a good number. Okay. That's a good number. And and uh, since everyone understand that they need to go to next generation uh, uh, storage devices, all flash. Okay, so the same uh, media that we have in our uh, iPhones uh, is running now um, in in uh, uh, enter in uh, SaaS companies inside Caminario K2. Um, everyone understands that they need to go to 100% flash to get the performance, to get the uh, ease of use, to get the scalability. Uh, and now it depends which product and which company to choose. Uh, so, um, everyone is evaluating this yeah. just for you to understand how big the market is. The enterprise storage market, um, is roughly, uh, 50 billion, five, zero billion dollars a year. Um, and the penetration of all flash is still relatively, uh, uh minor. So we're talking about 15% penetration. So, a vast market is still uh, in front of us uh, to go and uh, and conquer. Well, Danny, uh, and it, it's my, a great time for us. My listeners are wrapping up their morning jog or their morning commute. They're used to 20-minute episodes. I could go on and on for you. Here's some quick rapid-fire ones. Yes or no, you didn't raise anything in 2016. There's a lot of uncertainty around the election. You closed in January. Would you consider a large reason you were able to close in January because of the uncertainty removed from the Donald Trump presidency being done and he's in? No, we actually closed it uh, uh, in Q4. We just announced it in uh, January. Okay, great. Uh, uh, next question. Uh, Mark Benioff or, or, or Microsoft writes you a $2 billion check today. Do you sell the company? Uh, it's, uh, it, it, it's a great uh, based question. Off, and based I off this smile, that's a big <laughs> yes, but he's going, I can't say yes. <laughs> uh, I love your, uh, I, I, I love your questions and you're, uh, and you're absolutely challenging me, uh, challenging me. 
um, it's it's it, when you're in our business, uh, it's it's not a sprint, it's a marathon. And uh, always, what I say to everyone in the company, the one thing um, that we should be absolutely focused is on on, on our customers. Yep. And if we execute well, there will be a lot of action. Who's your number right. one? Who's your number one competitor? Just name the name real quick. Um, uh, EMC. When I was recently in New York meeting dozens and dozens of you that listened to the show, I showed many of you guys my SaaS analytics dashboard. I also showed you my website and a conversion dashboard from impression to free trial to paying customer, along with many other dashboards I use in my business, like my social media command center and a few others. Now, all of these are built with one tool. I just dragged and dropped them together. You can see how I did that at NathanLacka.com forward slash analytics. That's NathanLacka.com forward slash analytics analytics now these dashboards guys are critical to my business you know i refresh them on my mobile phone right when i wake up in the morning i roll over and boom refresh while wow, refresh them right before i want to take off on a flight because i'm just addicted to data and numbers they drive my business so i think they probably drive your business too you can see my dashboards how i use them at nathanlacka.com forward slash analytics now if you go to the regular website that's the tool is called Flipfolio. You only get 14 days free. You go through my link, you get 90 days free. So I got a great deal for you guys. It does expire. So you got to go there now. Okay, let's wrap up here with the famous five. Uh, number one, Danny, what's your favorite business book? Oh, the goal. <laughs> number two, is there a CEO you're following or studying right now? Um, uh, no, actually, I am a fan of history. Okay, good. Number uh, three, what's your favorite online tool like Acuity Scheduling? Wow. Uh, actually, probably Skype. Okay, and what is your current situation? Married, single, you have kids? I ha I'm married with uh, uh, four kids, and wow. as I like to say, I have four kids. My wife has five. Uh, <laughs> and, and, and Danny, how many hours of sleep do you average every night? Uh, it, it's, uh, it depends. I, I wake up at four 30 in the morning. Uh, so it really depends when the, uh, when the day ends, it could call be, it five or six, seven, what? It, yes, it could be five. It could be, uh, after many fives, I'm crashing for an eight. So, uh, <laughs> it, it, it's re actually inconsistent and, and I travel a lot, which, which means that it's uh, very inconsistent. And how old are you, Danny? 45 and home base for you is San Fran, right? So actually, I'm back in Israel. The family's okay. back in Israel. Uh, my home is really on a plane, unfortunately. Uh, but this is part of the business. You you need to uh, understand that this is part of the business. All right, wrap us home here. Last question. Take us back 25 years. What do you wish your 20 year old self knew? Ooh, uh, I I just finished uh, flight academy. I was uh, a young pilot. Didn't know shit. Uh, but, uh, but had a lot of fun. And, uh, since then I, I have an addiction for speed. So any lesson uh, you tell your 20 year old self though? Ah, uh, um, it's, it's focus. It's, it's focus on what's important. Guys, there you have from Danny, the founder of Kaminario. He was beating the hell out of people as a fighter pilot, learned how to avoid my questions through his intense interrogative <laughs> training back in the day. In 2008, he launched Kaminario. They've raised over a quarter of a billion dollars. Maybe they're IPOing in the next two to three years. We'll see what happens. But most importantly, is they're really a big player in the data storage, data efficiency, and this data space, which is expanding extremely, extremely rapidly. Their basic revenue model, they've got between 1,000 and 10,000 or just thousands is what Danny said environments set up those environments cost 300 grand up front to set up and they've done an amazing job expanding revenue on those accounts 3x or the or over the first 12 months about 50% of their 2017 revenue will come from expansion another 50% from new customers again their team of 250 folks really playing in a big space Danny thank you for taking us to the top thank you all right guys cut in studio holy mackerel holy Danny what do you think man you have fun yeah, love it. You're, love a, it. you're a tough cookie, man. And you're good. And <laughs> you're right. good. It, it was a lot of fun. Take care. If you enjoyed Danny today, go back and listen to Jay yesterday. 
Jay was paying so much for a document signing product. He was its best customer. He loved it so much he decided to buy the whole company. He breaks down a great strategy of how you can make your own acquisitions by buying things that you already love. It would mean the world to me if you guys got any value from this episode, if you would go leave a review on iTunes right now and then subscribe. You know, I hustle like heck to get these episodes out every freaking day for you guys. And trust me, I love it. I would do it with no listeners. But boy, oh boy, it makes my day and it makes my team's day when we see great reviews and get your feedback. So thanks so much. Okay, Top Tribe, I love giving away free money. I feel like Oprah giving away cars, and I have something special for you today. How many of you have heard our super sharp guests talk about success they've had with Facebook and Google Ads? Well, all of you listening right now, yes, if you're listening, you get $100 in free AdWords. Here's how you get it. Okay, again, thanks for listening. Get the free $100 from Google, right, when you sign up with my website host provider, HostGator. Go sign up now to get your free money. HostGator.com forward slash Nathan. Again, that's HostGator.com forward slash Nathan.